Okay, uh, today we're looking at some more of the 143rd scale vehicles I got from Chasing Diecast Cars. Many chances up next. Okay, so hopefully this will be somewhat of a brand review. If you've never checked out Mini Champs, they do really, really nice die cast in different scales. Uh, Mini Champ 64, Maxi Champs, other brands are all related to the parent company. Uh, these are all going to be 143rd scale today, as you have surmised. And I thought just for this one, and this is kind of the crown jewel, in my opinion, of the cars that we're going to look at today. I thought I would just show maybe the packaging if you are interested. These are all going to be older models, uh, probably close to 20 years old, I, I would assume. Um, this is a Porsche 911, excuse me, Porsche 911 Turbo. This is blue metallic. This is your box. It comes with little flap for the back you know these originally were Paul's model art they became mini champs and this is your packaging that you will get so let's take a look at the car nice acrylic case plastic base and one screw holds it in this says a limited edition of 2016 pieces not sure if that means uh, this color or for this actual casting that'd be pretty low if it was for the casting here's your case and we will take this thing off do a quick once over and then we'll stick it on the turntable to look at it and the others may not do the full opening we might just go straight to the turntable so here we have a beautiful deep Metal flake blue. You've got uh, a separate piece here. I don't think that's paint. Now that's a separate piece on the rocker. Wheels are amazing. You can see the um, brake. Let's see if it moves. No, it doesn't move. So that's pretty authentic. I was watching a small metal, co excuse me, small model collector video. Uh, recently and he referenced Mini Champ 64 so I thought this would be a nice look at the 143rd scale version. You do have turbo written in the faintest of matte black paint on the rear engine cover. Spoiler has a little bit of paint for the third brake light, lensed tail lamps, and the exhaust looks really good on these. So let's look at the underneath. You've got two screws holding it together. Here's your base. All of your suspension, crossbar, um, what else? Maybe sway bars. There's your engine cover on the bottom. All of that's done nicely in chrome. Pretty cool wiper detail. It is not loose. It, is, it looks like it's built into the, well, no, it's gotta be a separate piece for the casting. Pretty authentic rims, lensed headlamps, and a Porsche badge that appears to be proportionate to the vehicle. Kind of a knock a lot of us have on 164 scale is that the badges are just way out of proportion. Nice rear view mirror visible on this one. No opening parts. Here's your interior. Transmission. You've even got, looks like a badge on the steering wheel. Fantastic interior on this vehicle. Let's stick it on the turntable. Okay, up next is a Fiat Barchetta. Don't know much about this one. I'll try and learn some stuff before we stick it on the turntable. Be right back. Okay, so 
looking at this thing off the turntable, look at the interior on this, guys. This is outrageous. Dials have, I think they even have you know, different colors and, um, you know, what you call it, the things that move on the dial. <laughs> I can't even think right now. I'm looking at the car. Uh, rear view mirror looks great. Side view mirrors look good. Lenses look amazing. Yeah, Mini Champs was uh, the benchmark for a number of years back when these were made, and, and for good reason, too. This little Fiat is amazing. Hope you enjoyed it. So here's a Peugeot 406 next. It's a nice crimson metal flake paint. Um, try and get to where we can look at the car and not my fingers. Look at the rims. This thing is uh, pretty authentic on the wheels. Black leather interior. This is what this car had. Sunroof, the antenna, fantastic detail. Peugeot badge is nice and clean. And 406 is perfect. Check it out on the turntable. All right, as this thing comes back around, tell me if any of you guys get Honda Civic vibes. That's what I was thinking when I saw the rear end of this vehicle. Okay, next up is an M3 BMW Cabriolet, and it is freaking awesome. So kidney grills are done in chrome, nice BMW badge. Even the fog lamps are lensed. Coming around, you've got some pretty good detail on this vent on the fender. You've got, uh, looks like an indicator light on the fender as well, right where the molding is. Check out the BMW logo. Looks like it's slightly off-centered on that wheel, but that wheel cap actually has the propeller logo in it. You can see great detail on the lug nuts and everything. Fantastic. Here is the rear end. Got your M3. Again, Loads of detail on the undercarriage. This cabriolet, you knew the interior was going to be amazing on it. No hiding behind any tinted glass on this one. Fantastic gear shift, center console, e-brake, the whole nine yards. I love the blue, blue leather interior on this one. Yeah, let's watch this thing go around under the lights. It's going to look pretty good. Okay, next up in the lineup is an Alfa Romeo 156 Saloon, which I assume means sedan. And you've got a really awesome Alfa Romeo badge on that grill. Absolutely instantly recognizable grill at that. Look at the wood grain steering wheel. And it's really nicely contrasted by the black interior 
I don't know if we can see much more. We've also got a wood grain color center console as well. So this one's got the cool backup lamp on the package tray on the inside. This is a 97 model from Mini Champs. Look at the badge, how clear that is. Lens tail lamps. This seems like it's one of the earlier Mini Champs. Tires look a little different. Fuller, a little bit more rounded. The rims look as accurate as always. In fact, I think there's even another badge or a logo on the end cap, a wheel cap. That's amazing. A little bit more color on the bottom. Seems like that gold is new. And the rest of it is up to par with the other models that we've looked at so far. Vehicle I don't know that I've ever seen. I don't have this in 164 scale. This is an Alfa Romeo 156. So I didn't know a thing about this car. Um, it debuted in 97 at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Went on to win 1998 European Car of the Year Award. Pretty cool. Okay, I definitely smiled a little bit extra when I picked up this Saab. If you are fans of Saab like I am, you know how difficult it is to find 164 versions of it. There's some old Matchbox castings, Corgi, whatever. Nothing really nice and new. The closest thing I have found are these 172nd scale Cararama that uh, Diecast Dude in the Netherlands picked up for me. And I wish that there were more versions of Saab, maybe the 900 in 164 scale. These 172nd scales are amazing. I just wish that they had more 164. So let's look at this. This is a 9.3. So my best friend back in Louisiana when I was growing up, his, his dad was a B-52 bomber pilot. So he spent time all around the world and had a Saab and growing up in Louisiana in the 1980s, you didn't see a lot of Saab on the road. Uh, so it was cool to ride in that car. And this kind of reminds me of it. It's just a beautiful car. Um, kind of maybe underrated. I bet Benny Carlson likes them. Benny from Sweden. Um, so let's start. We've got a Saab logo on the hood. Nice registration plate. Cool. Uh, headlamps and they've got wipers on them. I remember that the headlights that my friends saw had were just absolutely blinding. They were like super halogens compared to what most cars had back then. And maybe that's just me romanticizing it, but it seemed like there was something neat about those headlamps. Antenna on the rear, coming around on the back, you've got a huge rear wiper. You got your Saab on the left, 9.3 on the right, badge on the deck lid. And this one's of course got the same fantastic detail on the undercarriage. Love the black. Um, it is a gloss black. You've got some flat black for your molding, indicator light and badge on the fender. Look at the molded seats, the headrest. Those are cool. Tremendous car by many champs. Let's look at it as it goes around.
Okay, next up we have got a 328i BMW wagon. Pretty cool dark pewter color, a nice beige leather interior. Again, love how they set it off with a black steering wheel or gear shift. The contrast really, really works. Dashboard, all of that in black. So pretty standard details as the others we have seen. Here's your, your base. This is a 328i. Notice it does have a separate piece for a wiper. Yeah, beautiful wagon. Model Champs making wagons before they were even cool. Check out the roof rails that are separate pieces, not like the built-in piece of you know, just a ridge on a 164 by Hot Wheels. Okay, so I hope, guys, that uh, I have not missed the opening part on all the other ones. As I was taking this one out of the package, I heard a little bit of a rattle and noticed that this hood opens. But to my defense, look how flush this hood lays while it is closed. Even though it is an opening part, look at those gaps. You would never know that this was an opening part vehicle. So we'll look under the hood here in a second. You guys have got to look at this interior. This is just the best one yet. So this is a BMW Z8 Cabriolet. And I learned in a video not too long ago, Cabriolet means that the roof is flexible, malleable, however you want to say it, and folded up inside, either the behind the seats or inside the trunk. Um, but that is just a beautiful interior. So you've got all the dials, BMW on the steering wheel, multiple colors on the steering wheel. Look at even the instrument cluster on the dash. The mirror reflects, it's just crazy. Um, seat rest, you've even got the additional roll protection behind the seat rest, chrome on the side view mirrors. Profile on the car looks dead on, of course it is. And this is a Z8, look at the even the badge on the inside of that vent. Lensed headlamps even though, nope, these are actually painted. So either painted or stickers. This must be one of the older versions. Um, interior is so good. I'm not going to worry about that. And in fact, I'll trade lens lamps for a really cool detailed interior on an engine bay. So you've got uh, paint, you got stickers, you've got even these lensed headlamps are like really, really amazing. Just an absolute beauty. Let's look at it go around. You know, hopefully I won't um, say it to the point where it becomes awkward, but this amazing gift from Chasing Diecast Cars, it's almost like he was shopping for me 20 years ago. This, uh, this is a Peugeot. This is a 306 Cabriolet. Um, these cars are just absolutely right in my wheelhouse. I love street cars, European makers. 
and um, this is another awesome one. Check out the interior. Look at the red on the seat belt um, pieces. I don't know if I showed any of the back seats up to now, but you've got the seat belt uh, receptors, I guess you would call them. Interior, just amazing. You can almost read the dials. This is a 206 by Peugeot. Let's see, we've got the standing lion badge. A little bit of detail on the exhaust here and looks like we've got a spare wheel under there. Tan interior on the black car, really working for me. Now let's see, I mentioned on the other one that uh, hopefully I haven't missed a bunch of opening parts, but I don't think I did because this one doesn't open either. Let's check it out on the turntable and I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, the next two are going to be SEAT, S-E-A-T, and that's great because the next thing I learn about the automaker SEAT will be the very first thing I ever learn about the automaker SEAT. No idea. Um, I'm, I'm not even going to guess. I think it's France, maybe Spain. Where are SEATs from, guys? Like, I, I hate to sound all American, but... This is a brand I have got to get to know and, and be more familiar with. Um, this one's called an Arosa, and that sounds Spanish to me. So I'll check once we get done looking at this one, and I'm just gonna presume that these are made in Spain. This is a really cool little mini compact, and it's got, uh, looks like about 13 inch wheels on it. It's got a nice cool S badge on the grill. Lamps, um, just a, not a metal flake red, it's just pretty much a flat red, but it's got a gloss finish. Seat Arosa on the rear lift gate, and even the interior on this one looks pretty good. So let's check it out as it goes around, and I'll have a few more facts after I do a little homework. Well, we guessed right, Seat is in Spain, um, and if you didn't know that, like me, shame on us because they've only been around 70 years. The Seat Rosa, uh, they actually made these for 17 years. Okay, so that last red Seat, it said saloon on the label. This is another Seat. This is a Toledo. Um, it's got 99 on the tag. I don't know if that means the car is a 99 or this is when Mini Champs released it. But this one also says saloon, so I don't know what to think about the definition of saloon now. So we've got uh, Toledo on the left hand side. We've got Seat. Uh, that we've just got a badge and then we've got a V6 badge on the right hand side. Seems like they've got a little dot in the light bar in the middle where you would put your key to unlock the trunk. That's pretty cool. You've got some backup lamps built into the tail lamps. Nice. Uh, black interior as a lot of them are. Really cool wheels on this one. And again, I think there is a badge on these wheels. This kind of reminds me, you know, the rear end on this one looks kind of like that Saab we looked at. I would not have minded uh, owning this vehicle unless it was a lemon. And uh, feel free to tell me if you've had a bad experience with a Seat if you're in Europe, because um, this one's kind of a cool car.
While Toledo is a major city in Ohio in the United States, it probably references a sword or blade made at Toledo, a city in Spain. All right, as we make our way toward the finish line, we will uh, stop first at an Opal, Opal Astra, Astra Coupe. The tag on the Mini Champs box just says Opal Coupe, but uh, looks like this is an Astra. And through my viewfinder, as I film this, it looks like a deep Columbia blue. But I promise you, as I hold it in my hands and I'm looking at it now, it is a lighter blue. It's like a, uh, it's got almost a pastel hue to it. Here is your, opal, <coughs> excuse me, opal badge on the deck lid. And you've got a little bit more detail there. Check out the lamps, all the different colors on it. Does this one have any undercarriage detail? It does. And let's see, what else have we got on this? No telling what that says. I'll have to look at it. You know, I noticed on these mini champs, almost all of them have an antenna, which makes it especially difficult to package and keep secure, but it does add a little bit more realism to it. Look at all the colors on this one. You've got multicolored seats. You've got silver on the dash. You've got silver on the center console. Just they don't stop with the interior. You know, Kyosho makes a beautiful 164 version vehicle, but all of their interior for the most part is just black, every bit of it. So it's hard to see any detail. Whereas you get something like this and you can see um, all the hard work that went into making that mold. So we'll watch it go around and then we've got one more to go. Thanks for hanging with me. Um, I'm, if you don't want to look at all these every time, I understand. I am because I love these cars. These are exactly what I like and what I collect. So enjoy the ones that you want to. And I'm just, I'm glad that you showed up uh, as long as you have. So hang on, I'll be right back. All right, so the last one for today is a beauty. This BMW X5 has got some pretty killer wheels. I don't know. These look a little bit um, more pimped out than BMW would do stock, but I can't imagine many champs would put anything in the aftermarket. Check out the radiator or condenser in front of the engine. That's really cool. You've got an engine cover in black. You've got an air box on top. Let's see how this thing closes. If it sits nice and flush like the other one we looked at, it pretty much does. Um, and I haven't shown you guys, these are obviously made to display, but they do roll really well. Um, okay, now this one, you can kind of tell that's an opening part. You got some wood grain interior detail. You can see the uh, gear shift here. And coming around on the rear, you've got nice defroster lines on the rear glass. X5, you got dual exhaust, loads of detail on the underside beauty let's put it on the turntable then we'll wrap it up and uh, again thank you for joining me today we'll have more I'm gonna kind of stagger these 
uh, over time. I'm not going to slam you guys and spam you with 143 all day. Uh, but I am going to go through this amazing gift and um, hang around. <laughs>